Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jessie with Minimalist Accounting and I have an awesome video for you guys today on the statement of stockholders' equity. We will keep it short and easy by first looking at a few basics, followed by the presentation of the statement, and finally an example to wrap it all up. Let's get started on those basics. The purpose of the statement of stockholders' equity is to showcase all the changes that occur during the year in various equity accounts. Now what are those equity accounts? They are the common stock, preferred stock, additional paid in capital, retained earnings, treasury stock, and accumulated other comprehensive income. The statement is also sometimes referred to as the statement of owner's equity or the statement of changes in equity. It is reported for a period of time. The statement of stockholders' equity can be represented either in the footnotes or the supplemental schedules or as a separate statement. Most big businesses prefer to create a separate statement detailing each equity component and the changes associated with them. Let me show you that with a generic template. As with any statement, we will begin with the titles, so something like a VC company, we're going to give the title statement of stockholders equity, and the time period that the information is being presented for. The formula is simple. We will begin with the beginning balance, add in the changes to give us our ending equity account. We do so by listing all the equity accounts horizontally, so you would see stocks, APEC, AOCI, retain earnings, etc., and a column for the total. And vertically is where we list all the components. So we have beginning balance, net income, OCI, common stock issue, dividends declared, repurchase of common stock, accounting principle changes, prior period adjustments, and then we have the ending balance. Here note that I highlighted accounting principle change and prior period adjustment to show you or for you to note that those two belong to retained earnings. And I do so because I just want to reiterate this, that it's a question that you all that you will often see on a test and most kids end up missing this question. So don't forget, those two belong to retained earnings. Okay, let me show you an example. Let's look at Amazon's statement of stockholders' equity. So we have Amazon giving us their title, the statement of stockholders' equity statement, and notice that horizontally they listed all the different equity accounts. We have common stock, treasury stock, additional paid in capital, AOCI, retain earnings, and a column for total. And vertically is where they listed different components. So you have balance and they listed each equity account's balance across. Then we have cumulative effect for a change in accounting principle. And remember what I said, this belongs to retained earnings. So they jot that down under the retained earnings column. You have net income, which again is a component of retained earnings. Write that down under retained earnings and just follow that through for all the different components. You have OCI, which belongs to AOCI. You have exercise of common stock options, which belongs under stock and APIC. Stock-based compensation and issuance of employee benefit plan stock, which belongs under APIC. Once you have those all down, you're just going to write down their totals. So you would do the total across and you would do the total at the bottom. In conclusion, remember that the statement of stockholders equity is reported for a period of time. The formula is simple. Take the beginning balance, add the changes to give you the ending balance. And finally, here are all the components of the stockholders equity account that you would need to remember. That's it folks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, happy counting!